course I'm all kinds of stuff. I just hope it doesn't screw anything up. Don't drop it. He wants to put it down there. <laughs> That's where it goes. Good job. <laughs> Resources away right here, so again, it is important, and it was hard to describe the thing, but it is good to identify an actual resource. Um, Realize that I need to really work on looking ahead, all the noises like this stuff, making myself practice about the stuff. You're just sick, right? Yeah. Yeah, things happen quick, right? <laughs> <laughs> I also that I need to really work on setting up my sections better because I come in too hot and push me. My friend, when I slowed down, just felt like I was going slow, I was getting better time. So, um, slow in, fast out sometimes. Yeah. It, especially, yeah, take, keep on patient. We talked about damage control earlier, and especially in a three-run format, like a local event or even you know, big national events, you're not going to get eight runs to try to figure it out in 11 seconds, right? So it really is important to, to not over, overshoot the entry. It's always easier to add a little bit back in if you realize, oh, I overslowed, you can add a little bit. If you go in too hot, oftentimes there's a cliff, right? If you go off, boom. At some point, it clicked for me, like the smooth, you know, 80% on the throttle through the slalom and stuff, rather than I was before like hammering it and not confident enough to keep it hammered. So it was, you know, shifting the weight. And as I did that, my slaloms improved pretty greatly. What's that? Dramatic. Dramatically. <laughs> sorry. Thank you, Chris, who sees me in the slalom every month. But yes, dramatically. Oh. Uh... My main takeaway was uh, I need to stop chasing time when I'm just, uh, for learning. Like I, I cut off time and then I got really greedy. I just tried to speed up as much as I could and then it just got sloppy at the very end. I want to say something from a competitive mindset, which we're going to do some of that tomorrow. Who's coming back tomorrow? Coming, coming back. Good. Awesome. Excellent. So chasing a time, does that work out well usually? No. Okay, so what happens if you go out fast and lay a good, consistent, well executed first run, what do you think that does to your competition and your clients? Makes them chase it. <laughs> oh. Exactly. They see this time and they're like, oh my god, oh my god. I, I gotta run that time. Well then they go out and start overdriving stuff, right? So there's it's good that you may be able to separate that you know if you execute, which is all we have control over, right? If you execute well, the time will be you can't control what that other that team driver is doing. You can only control you. And and if you go out and drive the way that you know you want to drive, then your time will that's not true. You can vegetable oil their tires. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like you were saying, just having your mental game set for that first run because sometimes, even though it's really frustrating that you have your best run on your first run at a place like Nationals, that's the place that you want to have it like that. And if you can be consistent on it and maybe just drop, you know, a hundredth or a tenth here and there, you know that you were right there and um, for me it's it's really a mental and yes physical game for me because um, sometimes there's just no time to walk the track well I mean a walk is a walk and you might not get out of it what you need so if you can put the p pieces of the puzzle together in your head and then be controlled in your aggression in the right places and feel good in that run it's that's what you need to do and that's what I wanted from today is a reminder because we all need a reminder on all of our basic lessons right of what you're supposed to do so just a, one thing I want to say is from previous schools we've had so many amazing instructors and many of them are here one of the tips that I remember from I think the first one when um, Mike Jr. Johnson was here was don't rely on your memory for all this write it down Write it down, tape it to your dashboard, and read it before every single run. I have it in my phone, and I can pull it up at any time when I feel like I'm, I don't know where my time is, I don't understand what's wrong. Just go back to your basics, to your toolbox, which is what they just gave you and made for you. And that way, this isn't just for today or for the month, it's with you forever. I think Brad had it on his dash for a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we got a person in the Northwest from Seattle, right on the dash. Look yep. ahead, stupid. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's just something we, our eyes fall down, you know, and uh, that's a reminder. For us. So, 
How many people wrote down last night? Three, four, or five items. Good, good. You really got to do that because you write it down made, before you forget how, how this way, feels. You'll the first race and you'll say, One of the things I was working on today is try to commit when using throttle. So you never want to use a throttle too early and then have to back off. So you want to wait, be patient until the right time. And when you commit to use a throttle, you use it and stay on it, be smooth about it. Yeah, what, what are some of the side effects if you get on the gas too soon? Well, if you're going too fast, I mean, if you're on the throttle too soon and you're not ready, then you can understeer or overshoot or, and, and or what, have to back off. The minute you back off, you get a weight transfer, and then you're all messed up. And what happens when things start happening here with the car? You stop, well, you stop looking ahead, right? Yeah, it takes up all your attention, and then you can't really get back into the sync exactly. of things. Exactly. So that's why, you know, people have car control skills. I mean, a lot of you guys know how to drive cars. People can be railing all the time, right? Sliding the car and doing this. But it's taking away any chance of looking ahead being right, right? So anytime something happens with the car, you want to stop it early. Get back to moving ahead. Oh, vocalization again, but then not in my head, saying it out loud. And uh, when I say it out loud, look for it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I was just saying it. I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> uh, I did that too. <laughs> um, I guess a better understanding of smoother inputs. Everyone told me in an S2000 you have to have smooth inputs because it does what you want it to do. But today I realized what that means and I actually videotaped it. So I saw my hands keep doing this and like and I was able to compare the difference and see that you can just do a little bit and it does a lot. And even even the gas, the whole string theory and whatnot, yeah, it made a big difference. Uh, I think the biggest thing I learned this week was uh, learning how to focus and not necessarily looking at one thing or just verbalizing a thing, but seeing through and making my hands and the whole vehicle follow through and create this whole line. So it was really valuable. Uh, I learned there's no 
a substitute for having the car in the right place and pointed in the right direction. <laughs> and other people, you can watch other people's lines, and you, but ultimately you have to find the, the path that's going to allow you to have proper placement and proper direction everything to line up for you. Uh, which isn't necessarily what's suggested by the appearance of the cones. If you're straight this way, maybe you don't, you want to, don't want to go through those perpendicular. Uh, Uh, one aha moment was uh, I had been looking ahead, but one of the problems was I hadn't been fully turning my head. So when I was going through three sixes and stuff like that, basically I was late to pick up the sight picture. And so, you know, by actually, you know, it was Chris was moving and just fully looking over like that, he's like, oh, oh yeah, well, I don't know why I wasn't doing that. <laughs> so that was big. The other thing was uh, as I did one of my runs this afternoon with Tom, he said, okay, what are you going to do to make it faster? Now, how are you going to say that? How, how are you going to interject that into your set? And I said, well, I'm going to say, stay fast, stay fast, because I got slow at the turnaround at the end with the, with the addition of the extra cone, and I got low on torque. So I had to stay faster to keep my engine RPM And that's exactly what we're saying as far as after you do a run and you're not happy with two or three elements of that run, change up that word, that repertoire that you're saying, and so that you make sure top of the McDonald's way turn. up there somewhere right it was not the tone right over here right so yeah placement placement plays a big role and those of you you know some of my students recognize that you know they got late at the top and didn't get back on the car placement and they paid for it for many many tones you know think it'll make somehow make it up so, yeah just oh, that's the other one yeah. try to speed up to make up for the lost time <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And I was tired. Yeah. Uh, well, there's quite a lot of stuff that uh, is thrown at us today. And I was trying to put it all together. Uh, looking ahead, verbalizing. Uh, uh, but my aha moment was uh, trying to stay amped up and uh, be, be ready and, and to anticipate uh, what's coming up. I found myself not being aggressive enough. Uh, so uh, that, that's the one big takeaway I have. Yeah, I used, I used to kind of pull up the line and, and I try to amp myself up also. I kind of get my brain up on edge, out in front. You know, so I'm, I'm very, very, as much proactive as I can be. You know, it's very easy to pull up the line and say, okay, we're just going to go. Next thing you know, the course is coming out. Yeah. So you, know, you need to go out there and you drive the course. Don't let the course drive you. Mike is. Well, Mike is driving. Yeah, so we. Yeah. I'll come in tomorrow. Uh, and take care of however he wants to pay for it. Okay, get this camera out of my hand. John. What? 